Welcome to Life Worship Center. We are a Pentecostal church that is passionate about Jesus. Now, as a church, our mission is to always be reaching. We want to be reaching up to find intimacy with God. We want to be reaching in to find unity with God's people. And we want to be reaching out for the world that God loves. Now, I pray that you'll join right in with us from home today and worship the Lord with us in spirit and in truth. I'm so excited to bring to you an encouraging and an uplifting message from the Word of God today. Thanks again for joining us, and let's go live at Life Worship Center. But before I get into the Word today, I just, God put something on my heart that I really I didn't necessarily see coming. So I've just got to say it because he like brought it back to my memory a few years ago. It was a word that I truly did not quite understand or comprehend when he spoke this into my heart. Uh, and I just want to say that today, probably everyone here is going to have a few different chances and opportunities to be offended. But that's just like, I feel like today is part three. <laughs> if you've been with us the last two weeks. If you ever just want to know what the heart of your pastor looks like, I want you to listen to the last two weeks and today, because that's like my heart. And God has given me the grace to be able to share my heart with you. I feel like in a way that I've never been able to before. Uh, so if you have our app, you can go back and listen to the last two weeks, the, the sermon after Pentecost and the sermon be filled and the sermon today. The God spoke... And he actually spoke this a few years ago. We were in the Sachs building. And there was a message given out in tongues and interpretation. And God, God spoke to us that there would come a day when we would not hear in our services as many messages in tongues and interpretation. The Lord brought this back to my heart and began to speak to me about this again. And he told me that we are entering into that season. And there's a couple of reasons as to why he's doing this and why he's doing it different. Number one is that God many times, many, many, many times through tongues and interpretation. And if you don't even know what that is, God bless you. Welcome to Life Worship Center. You will in time. Many, many times, God would repeat what was said in the sermon with a message of tongues and interpretation. And we went home saying God spoke today because there was a message in tongues and interpretation. And what God showed me when he first brought this to me several years back and I questioned what he was doing or what he would be doing... He told me that there would come a day that when the heart of the people was ready, he wouldn't have to repeat himself. And that the heart of the people would receive the word as the word. And they would not need an exclamation point on it through a gift from his spirit. And that when the gifts of the spirit, and this is number two, when the gifts of the spirit would be used, that they would be used in a more personal way that has a greater effect on the individual that needed the word. And so this is a growing and a stretching for us. And it's God. And you don't have to believe me that it's God. And you can be offended. I truly understand that. But as the pastor of this church, I'm just telling you what God has been showing me. The natural question is, is so, Pastor, should, are we not supposed to speak in tongues? If you've been listening to the last three weeks, you surely should know the answer to that. But if you feel like God has given you a word, the first thing you need to ask, there's two things you need to ask. Is this a word for the entire church? And if it is, be obedient to the Lord. Number two, you should ask, am I ready to step out? and give an interpretation of the word that God has given me. Am I ready to grow in that? And if you feel that's happening, then I encourage you to be obedient to the Spirit of the Lord. 
But to the congregation, I say that I believe God, He's, he's putting things together in a most unusual way that I didn't really see coming. But He's trying to bring us to a place where we receive His Word with joy and with excitement and with passion and that we apply it and that we walk it out. And that brings me to the title of our message today, which is simply, Walk. Walk. Look at your neighbor, just say, Walk. Galatians 5, chapter 13. I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. I will go back and read a couple verses out of the New King James Version. For you've been called to live in freedom, my brothers and sisters. But don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love. For the whole law can be summed up in this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. But if you are always biting and devouring one another, watch out. Beware of destroying one another. So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. I feel God's presence all over this Word today. And the Spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other, so you're not free to carry out your good intentions. But when you are directed by the Spirit, you are not under obligation to the law of Moses. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, Lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger. I know you guys wanted me to slow down on sexual immorality and impurity and idolatry and sorcery, but I feel the Lord wants me to slow down on quarreling. And jealousy and outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. The Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to His cross and have crucified them there. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Father, come before you, just like last week and the week before. There's opportunities for us to take offense. There's opportunities for us to be challenged. There's opportunities for us to grow. There's opportunities for us to be transformed. So I pray, God, that you please allow me to speak freely, without any bondage, any hindrance. Let me speak your word that you have spoken into my heart. And may the people have ears that are open, ears that hear ready to obey what you are saying to your church. In Christ's name, 
Amen. It is great to be fed. It is greater to be led. Everyone loves to be fed by the Spirit. And by the way, God loves to feed us. He says in His Word, He says, Open your mouth wide, and I will fill it. God truly desires to feed us, to bless us. And all you got to do is back up about 10 minutes from now. And just, I was being fed by the presence of the Lord this morning. I mean, the moment we started, God was just putting into me just his, his glory, His joy. He loves to feed us, and I love to be fed. But I want you to hear today that although it's great to be fed, it's, it's greater to be led. The number one reason for most people to go to a different church, and I've heard this as people have left us, and I've heard this as people have come here, is the number one reason that most people say, and it's, I think it's just a cliche that we're used to hearing, so we want to say it, but I've had people come in that, that just simply say, I came here, Pastor, because the church where I was, I just wasn't getting fed. I've also had people leave us and say, I just wasn't getting fed. And you know what? I just feel like, I believe the word backs me up on this, is that, this really isn't the place where the emphasis should be on feeding. Please don't take offense to this. And how many knows when you say don't take offense, you're about to offend somebody, or you wouldn't say don't take offense? <laughs> so don't take offense to this when I say, if, I, if I'm saying I wasn't getting fed, the picture I always get is a little child in a high chair waiting for someone to bring them something in order to satisfy their needs. That is not the way that God has designed us. That is a stage of our spiritual life in Him and, and we do begin our life in God as spiritual babes and, and, and we, but God's called us to grow, right? And so He's never intended for us as believers that have known Him for over six months or over a year to, to truly just rely upon a service between 10.30 and 12 or so to give us the nourishment that we need to live out our lives. That's not, that's not what He's called us to do. That is not His, his purpose. And so... If we're constantly finding ourselves starving on Sunday morning for the Word because we just haven't had the Word, and we're starving for just to feel His presence because we just haven't felt His presence since last Sunday, then, you know, we're in danger. We're in danger personally. And we've got to be having some big time issues Monday through Saturday. But we're also in danger of, of impacting the kingdom of God in a negative way, right? Because we're really not... Our focus is on the, le the feeding more than the leading of the Holy Spirit. And when God feeds you, it's because He wants to lead you. And so being led is greater than being fed... Part of the Lord's Prayer says, Give us this day, Matthew 6, 11, our daily bread. The Israelites were fed manna as they traveled from Egypt to the Promised Land. But they were only given a daily provision. And God, as good as His presence is, and, and as, as amazing as it felt today, he gives us daily bread. Daily bread. He didn't pile them up with those heavenly made biscuits, right? He didn't pile them up at their house and say, this will get you. 
This will get you to next week. He gave them a daily provision. Why? Because he was leading them. He was leading them to the promised land. He never intended for them to stay there and just live off biscuits. Right? They went to God and they said, okay, God, we're getting tired of biscuits. God's like, I know you're getting tired of biscuits. I didn't intend for you to have them this long. What I've got for you is over there. Get your mind off being fed and get it on being led. They said, God, we don't, the biscuits are getting old. Send us some meat. So God sent them some KFQ, Kentucky Fried Quail. <laughs> I don't know that it was fried, but it should have been. That's all I'm saying. Should have been. So they had biscuits and quail. Their mind was on being fed, not being led. I mean, God had, he had a place. The gardens had been planted. The soil had been toiled. Seeds were planted. Things were growing. Houses were furnished. There was cars in the driveway. And they're in the desert saying, give us something better than biscuits. And he's trying to show them that if you get off of the feeding and, and just pay attention to the leading, there's somewhere I want to lead you that's better than a wilderness and biscuits. It's a change in mindset. Don't settle for being fed. Come to church to be led. Go to your prayer closet to be led. Get before God in order to be led. You know He's going to feed you. He is a good, good Father. And you know when you get along with God that you're going to experience His presence and it's just going to feel amazing. But may your heart be set on God. Where are you leading me right now? You understand what I'm saying? He wants you to walk. But it, it's growing, right? And growing isn't fun. Growing involves growing pains. It's hard to convince a child when their legs are aching that it's a good thing. It's just, you're growing. You're growing. Right? Which is because growing involves discomfort. It, sounds, it just sounds fun. Let's come in here and eat every Sunday. Let's eat like it's Golden Corral. Stuff our bellies, but just stay in the chair and get fat. Let's get spiritually fat and sit our bottoms in the chair and enjoy God. Because I got fed today. You know what I've learned? I knew this, but I learned it again. Some things you got to learn again. I learned that eating without walking makes you fat. I got a new job. I work a full-time job outside of the church. Eight to five. My boss likes to cook. He cooks biscuits almost every morning. If he don't cook biscuits, he picks up biscuits. He cooks fried chicken biscuits, pork tenderloin biscuits. We have sausage biscuits. One day we, had, one day we even had biscuits with Viennese sausages in them. Do it just good, good, good for you stuff, that kind of stuff. Garen would pass out. We just have to wheel him out. And in lunch, we have vendors that come in that want to get our business. So they bring Mata's Pizza and Dad's Barbecue and there's food. And then, and then somebody goes to the kitchen around 3 o'clock and they bake some cookies. You're like, that's a wonderful place to work. <laughs> it really, it really, it really is. But I've discovered that eating without walking makes you fat. Before I took that job... I would walk about 15 miles every week. I would go out to the golf course early in the morning or late in the afternoon, and I would walk. Now i got no time to walk, and eating without walking, it just makes you fat. You understand what I'm saying? 
I'm trying to do more than just be funny today. I'd go out of business if I just tried to be funny all the time. <laughs> trying to show you something. That being fed by the Lord without walking it out makes you spiritual lazy just living off of what it feels like. If God feeds you, His intentions are to lead you. Sometimes we get to smacking so loud, you know, in what God's feeding us, that we don't even hear what He's saying to us. We don't hear it. But perhaps if we came to church, perhaps if we came to church already full, right? We've been with the Lord. We're walking it out. And we come to church, perhaps then we could truly be led. Right? And we can make this time productive in that, that we were really ready for the Word. And when God gets... Because I just want to tell you all something. I'm not buying these sermons. I'm not. I know you're like, thank goodness, you'd just be wasting your money. You could buy something better than that. I'm not. I truly, honestly go before the Lord and say, God, what does your people need? I truly do. And so when we come in this place and, and, and we're ready to walk out where God is leading us, that's when we become life-changing, life-transforming life people, right? So that's what we want to do. We come to church, receive, we still get fed. It's amazing, it's incredible. But then we can still, we can still hear His voice. But sometimes we're, we're just... We're in such a place that we can't even hear what He's really saying to us because we're not spiritually in tune and ready to hear what He's saying. We might hear God say something like, you know, just in a still small voice, something like, you know, go on a mission trip or pay for someone else to go on a mission trip. We might hear God say something like, come and be a part of Catalyst next week. Or give a bunch of money to Catalyst because they ran out of clothes and stuff for the kids last time in the first 30 minutes. We might hear a small voice say things like help in children's ministry. By the way, if you have kids... God's already told me you should be helping in children's ministry. So you can like mark that one, put a check by it, and listen for something else. Because God already said, He blessed you with a kid. Now go help the other people minister to our kids. I should have said not be offended before I said that, but I forgot. You might hear Him say stuff like, go visit the sick. You might hear God whisper things like, forgive them already. You might hear God whisper something like, give the tithe. Sometimes it isn't even spiritual. You might hear God whisper something like this. Somebody needs to cut the hedges. We can't even see the name of our church right now. <laughs> Y'all are like, I don't know if he's serious or not. <laughs> I'm not going to cut the hedges. And I don't want Jimmy Way to cut the hedges because Jimmy Way cuts the grass every week as a service to our church. So I need somebody while you're getting fed. To be spirit led and hear God say, You got some trimmers at home. Come cut the hedges. People listening online are like, That joker's crazy. <laughs> Everything God says isn't some kind of super spiritual something. Right? Sometimes it's just like, 
God's like, I put all y'all together. There's no way anything should ever be left undone. Ever. Ever. Receiving must lead to being. I've been talking about the beggar at the gate that Peter and John came and he said, you know, I don't have any silver and gold. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. The beggar was a miracle seeker. Peter and John were miracle workers. Which one do you want to be? Do you want to be the person that's always seeking for that one thing you need right now? Right? As soon as you get it, there's another one thing you got to have right now? Or do you want to be the person that wants to make that miracle happen for somebody else? It's a choice, right? A song came to my mind this morning. This was not in my notes, but this morning... A song came to my mind. I'm just going to read you the lyrics of this song. Natalie Grant sings it. She says, We don't feel ready. We don't feel steady. Question what we really have to give. Stay where it's safer. Claim faith but waver. Is this how we're really meant to live? We pray but never move. We say but never do. It's time to get our hands dirty. Be loved, there's a whole lot of hurting. Calling all hearts, calling all hands, calling all feet to take a stand. Why sit around and wait for a miracle to come when you can be one? When you can be one? When you can be one? A little something might feel like nothing, but his hands, it's all we'll, his hands is all we'll ever need. To speak life to the broken. Watch the blind eyes open. It's who He's calling you and me to be. We can be the change. Be the hope. We can be the arms that don't let go. We can be a light in the dark. We are, we are, we are where it starts. We can be light in the dark. We can be the arms that don't let go. It's time to get our hands dirty. Be love. There's a whole lot of hurting. Calling all hearts, calling all hands, calling all feet to take a stand. Why sit around and wait for a miracle to come when we can be one? That is good. Romans 12 and 6 says, In His grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you are a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. If it is in hedge cutting, cut some hedges. I broke off into the message Bible again. I'm sorry. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. What's he saying? He's simply saying, after you get fed, be led. <laughs> And use what I have fed you to lead you to do what I've equipped you to do. To be the light. To be the love. To be Jesus out of these walls. Life happens when you walk. Life happens when you walk. Life doesn't happen when you talk. What you say matters, but what you do matters more. 
Now, talking the right thing should lead you to walking the right way. But simply talking the right way is not enough. We must walk out what we're talking out. The living is in the walking. So let's look at that for a minute. Galatians 5, I'm going to go back there just a second. And let's look at the New King James Version because he uses the word walk. And so I want you to see it. He says, I say then, in verse 16, walk in the Spirit. And you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another. So that you do not do the things that you wish, but if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. What a promise. Walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Look at your neighbor and say, I want that. I want that. I used to get so upset and so confused and so disturbed. We just have a wonderful time in the presence of the Lord. I just had a wonderful time in the presence of the Lord. And then all of a sudden in the middle of the day on Monday, you're like, what in the world has happened to me? What happened to yesterday? Yeah, Walmart. That's happened to me too, Jeff. Just think about it. How is it? I mean, is it not confusing that it can be so great and wonderful in here? And you get out there on a Monday or a Thursday or a Friday or whatever, and something goes wrong and... You respond wrong, or what? something just happens, and you're like, what in the world? I used to get so tore up. And God always led me back to this verse. And He would say, walk in the Spirit, and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And so I began to understand that God is simply saying that a transformed life a crucified flesh, a sanctified heart is manifested in the walking. It isn't manifested while we're sitting at the table receiving the good things of the Lord. It is manifested as we walk in the Spirit. I'm going to help you get there. Let's break it down. Walk in the Spirit. So let's start with walk. Many of you today would say, Pastor, I'm stuck. I would say to you, walk. Unless you're on a treadmill, walking always seems to get you somewhere different. Right? Only if you're on a treadmill. It's impossible to walk and not go somewhere different. Now, you can walk in circles. Walking in circles is better than not walking at all. At least the scenery's changing some. Hear me out. The children of Israel, they walked in circle, in a circle around the mountain. Because they didn't have the faith to believe God to walk in the straight line that He desired for them to. And so He let them walk in circles. So even God is saying walking in circles is better than not walking at all. And so if you come up to me saying, Pastor, I always start out good, but I'm ending up at the same place. Well, I'm going to say, well, at least you're walking. It's a start. We just got to, we just got to figure out the walking part and the rest of it. We got to figure out what he means by the next part that he says there. So he wants us to walk. Where do we walk? He says, walk in. That's interesting, because if I'm in, that means I'm surrounded by something. You can't be in something without being surrounded by something. I'm in this church, so I'm surrounded by the church. No matter which direction I look, there's my bald spot again. And which direction I look, I'm, I'm surrounded by the church. I'm in. Everybody, are you with me? I'm in here. So to be in something is to be surrounded by something. 
All right. So how can I walk and stay in? Because naturally, if, I, if I'm in and I start walking, I'm eventually going to walk right out of this door. So how can you walk in something? How can you be surrounded by something and walk in it without walking out of it? Is this making any sense? The only way you can be in something and walk in it and not be out of it is if the something that you're in is actually moving. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? So God is asking you to walk in something that's moving. Meaning that if you don't walk, what? <laughs> if you don't walk, let's get past that part. That's in the past. You get left. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. If you don't walk, you get left. Now don't get mixed up with all my theology that God will never leave me nor forsake me. Listen to what I'm saying. I'm going to help you as we get to the end of this. If you're not walking in the Spirit, you wake up on Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, and you look all around you, and it's not the same as it was on Sunday when you got fed. Because you stayed where you were, and God is on the move. God is on the move. The move. You don't want to stay when God is moving. He led the children of Israel with a cloud by day and fire by night. When the cloud stopped, they stopped, set up camp. When it moved, they moved. Because you don't want to be in the middle of the wilderness with all the enemies and all the stuff that's out there when the God that's leading you has took off you end up in the wilderness and you end up in yourself and you end up where you end up when you say I'm stuck God's moving God's moving there's a song I don't know who sings it it's God is on the move God is on the move yeah he's on the move so the question is am I on the move Am I on the move? I wish you could get this. I see it so strongly in my heart. As God speaks to you, as we come together and we're fellowshipping, now we're hearing the word, and God just speaks something in your heart about forgiving somebody or doing something in the church. God is actually showing you where He's moving to, and He's wanting you to come with Him. He's wanting you to come with Him. And so we get stuck in that, in that it all felt good and sounded good. Preacher, you did good. You stepped on my toes today. The point was never to step on your toes. The point was to kick you in the seat of your pants. That was the point. The point was so that, that you would start moving your feet to where God was going. Because we want to be where God's going. We want to be where God is leading. I'll show you why in just a minute. Walk in. The Spirit moves, and we want a move of God, but we can't have a move of God and stay in the move of God without walking. That's why there's a repetition. That's why there's a cycle that happens in many churches where there's great moves of God, but nothing changes in the church because God is moving, and we just get caught up in the thing when we're in it, and God moves. And we didn't. And we wait and pray for his next move. And we even call it a move. We go home and say, oh, there was such a move of God. I'm preaching. Y'all just don't know it. Oh, it was such a move of God today. Nothing's changed. That means the only person that moved was God. And if you didn't move, he's down the road. <laughs> He told you. He tried to show you. 
This is where I'm going. This is where it's at. This is where your abundant life is. This is where you get unstuck. This is where you leave your cares behind. This is where it's at. Come on, and he moves. And we're laying, we're laying in the floor. We're walling around. We're feeling so good. And we come back next Sunday, and we're like, I'm, what changed? Nothing changed. God called you to walk, and you didn't walk. We'll blame it on the glasses, y'all. If we'll walk in Him as He moves, He says, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. In other words, He's saying, you will stay surrounded by Me. Right? Right? Preacher, I got a bad. I didn't wear my watch today, so you're in trouble. I, preacher, I, I got a, you know, it's bad about outbursts of anger. I would just get mad at the drop of the hat. Say things I shouldn't say, do things I shouldn't do. I'm just, I can't, I can't help it. God's word to you is walk in the spirit. Walk being surrounded by His Spirit. He says the Spirit doesn't struggle with anger. There's no anger like that in Him. When we get in trouble, because we're not walking. It's not because you're different. Some of you listen to the sermon, you look at the people on the stage, you're thinking... That, you know, why am I different, God? Why do I struggle with these things? Why does my flesh want to do that? Why does my mouth want to say that? Why? The Bible just told us all that your flesh is contrary. That's me, that's you, everybody in this place. Your flesh is contrary to the Spirit of God. It's always fighting against the Spirit of God. So you're no different than me, and I'm no different than you. But the Word goes on, and He says, but. In other words, He's saying, but I'm going to show you something. Your flesh is contrary, but let me show you something. If you'll be directed and guided by my Spirit and stay surrounded by my Spirit as I move, as I move you to change things, as I move you to do things you're not comfortable with, as I move you to be my hands and my feet, you'll come to realize that those struggles are not struggles anymore. That's what he's saying. And you really have to twist the word to make that say anything else. Because he's pretty clear. That when you are in him, walking in him, the spirit wins the battle over the flesh. When you're not walking in him, the flesh wins the battle over the spirit. So the word for us today is, is walk. Walk. Psalm 91 and 1, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I love this verse. But listen to me today, in the context of today's message, I read this verse now and I understand that dwelling requires walking. Dwelling requires walking. Because God is on the move. And His presence is on the move. God's presence for you is waiting on you at that person that He's asked you to make amends with. God's presence for you is waiting on you to walk in obedience in that thing that He's asking you to do that's difficult. But you know He's calling you to do it. Garen said Constantine, and some of you immediately wrote that off as something that you're not comfortable comfortable with doing somebody says witnessing and many of you completely write it off as something you're not comfortable doing somebody can say mission and many of you are you're writing it off knowing that's something that God's never called you to do but I want to tell you something God's presence is waiting on you and the place that he's leading you to walk in that's where he is and so when he says 
to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. When he says that he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of Almighty. He's not saying for the person that gets a tent and puts it right here on the bottom of the stage and just lives here. That's not what he's saying. Because he's moving. He's moving. God is not in a fixed place. God's plan for your life is not in a fixed place. God's plan for you is not seat three, row five. That's not God's place for you. Surely, surely won't have anybody that still feels that way. God's place for you is not a assigned seat in this church. God's place for you is moving. I hope this is coming out the way it should. Galatians 5 and 25. Since we are living, and I'm getting getting close to the end. Thank you for your patience today. Since we are living, since we are, you hear that? Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of of our lives in other words he is saying that it is possible for you to have life because of the spirit but not be willing to go where the spirit is leading you and if that is you you'll be leading a life living a life that's contrary to God's will for your life simply because you are not willing to walk where God is asking you to walk The Spirit has given us life. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ, you have eternal life through the Spirit. Mm. How many want to truly know where God's leading them? Right? Come on, we want to know where God's leading us. But I think we've made it too complicated. We want God to give us a 20-year plan. And most of the time, He simply gives you a a simple next step. A simple next step. I feel like God is leading me to missions, but I'm waiting on the name of the country. I feel like God is leading me to give, but I'm waiting on Him to tell me how much. You understand? We want to complicate When God is making it simple and He's just giving it, He says His Word is a light to our feet, to our path. But it lights up many times. Maybe it's different for you, but it's not always lit up like the whole path as far as you can see. Many times in my life, it's just right there. And I know that right there is where my foot needs to go next. And as I do that, I find myself surrounded by Him. I want to share this last thing with you. I don't feel like having an altar call today. I feel like God did that during the music. I want to share this last little thing with you. I'm going to pray. We're going to close the service after we have our announcements. I'm going to challenge you that as you walk out of this place today, that you be willing to be led. Because God fed you today. Whether you realize it or not, God fed you today. Real life changing, life transforming power is not realized in our local fellowship on Sundays at 10.30 a.m. It's just not. This is like the boat. I want you to see it that way. This is like the boat. We all get in this boat together. And we feel better, we fellowship, and we enjoy, we enjoy each other, which I, I hope we do anyway. We grow stronger through community. But the life in us is proven outside of the boat. The disciples were on a boat. The disciples were on a boat. And the boat started rocking. 
While they were on the boat and the boat was rocking, Jesus was up on the mountain. He was praying in the middle of the night. The Bible says that the boat was rocking because the wind was contrary. As I read that, the Lord sort of brought me back to Galatians 5 where he said, The flesh is contrary to the Spirit. But as the wind is contrary and the boat's rocking, they're safe and secure inside the boat. They look out and they see what they think is a ghost at first. But it's Jesus. Jesus is walking on the water. Now don't miss this. Jesus is walking where everybody else sinks. Do you get that? Don't lose the sight of the fact that the, the wind is contrary just like our flesh but Jesus is walking where everybody else is sinking we're guilty in the church to 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 we we shouldn't be but sometimes we're guilty in the church to convince people that it's it's okay that you sink when you walk out there because everybody sinks when they go out when they get out of this boat and they go out everybody sinks it's okay if you sink But if you'll see the story here, Jesus is walking where everybody else is sinking. And Peter says, if it's you, Jesus, call me to come out there with you. And Jesus says, come on. And so Peter steps out on the boat into the place where the wind is contrary and the waves are billowing. And Peter's feet hit the water. And it's like this floor. And he takes another step. And now Peter is out on the water where everybody else would be sinking because he's being led to Jesus. Are you following? I've never seen this until this week that God showed this to me. And a theology... (laughs) Anyone that is schooled in theology would probably say I'm nuts, but I don't care. Because the Lord showed me this, that it's a really good picture of someone walking in the Spirit, that they can walk where others sink. Yes. Yes. And so he's walking on the water. And just for a moment, his eyes focus on the water and on the winds which are contrary to what he should be doing, to what he desires to do. And the moment he focuses on that, he begins to sink. But catch this, because he's walking in the Spirit, he doesn't sink. He finds the hand of God. Why? Why at that moment? Because he wasn't satisfied to stay in the boat. He was willing to walk out in the Spirit of God, to be led by God. And in doing that, he found that he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High, which requires walking, going to be preserved and kept bow your head close your eyes this was the word of God for us today father we thank you for your word (laughs) we thank you for the life-changing power of your word you truly have fed us today and God give us faith to walk out of this place in your spirit being led by you that whether we go to our jobs tomorrow or the school wherever it may be that we find ourselves surrounded by you as we walk out your will as we have fellowship with your spirit
as we have been given life by your Spirit. God, we were dead. We were dead in our trespasses and our sins. But you have made us alive by your Spirit. You have sealed us with that Holy Spirit of promise. And now, God, may we receive the challenge that as we live by the Spirit, may we also walk in your Spirit. In Christ's name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise today. It was a privilege to have you as our special guest today. Thank you for joining us at Life Worship Center. Now, our ministry is supported by the generosity of people just like you. Please consider giving today online by clicking on the link of our website, lifewc.org. Thank you for making a difference in the lives of others. And until next time, God bless.